welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome you again to today's presentation. And, you know, today I'm going to talk about something which is called imitation. You know, you imitate something. And, uh, you know, generally, people would actually feel embarrassed when they're trying to imitate somebody and somebody else finds out, right? I mean, generally, if, if one of you would be imitating the other, and the other suddenly finds out, I mean, what would you do? You would probably try to show that you were not imitating or whatever. However, I want to point out certain kind of imitation that has been present in humanity probably since the very first human being. <coughs> and people feel proud about it. And these days, it's actually the topic of many books. People are trying to tell you that do this more and more. And that is Biomimetics. <laughs> what exactly is biomimetics? Well, if you listen to this lady, she actually says the biomimicry revolution actually introduces an era in which we stop trying to extract things from nature. We stop focusing on that for a moment and, all, and try to focus on what we can learn from nature. And then we try to imitate it. All right. I will go into detail about different kinds of examples about how people have been imitating nature. But let me first tell you... Uh, Alright, I'm actually first going into the examples, sorry. So, you see, Velcro is one of the most important uh, and widely used instruments that we have in our bags, in our gloves, in our... I mean, it's present almost everywhere in our products, right? And it was actually inspired from burrs. These burrs are actually some plants which have some, you know, these spiky things on them, and they stick to your clothes. And people found out that they're really hard to get off the clothes. So they said, okay, instead of getting them off, we're going to imitate them. And they made Velcro. And they're not sticking stuff, imitating birds. All right. We know acid. And especially one form of acid is known as formic acid, and we use a lot of factories to produce this because it's one of the most widely used acids, along with sulfuric and hydrochloric. But these little creatures over here can actually manufacture this formic acid within their bodies using some glands. And you would be perhaps surprised to know that the first formic acid mass production was actually from the distillation of ants. They took a large amount of ants and they distilled them and produced formic acid. And now later on we're just trying to imitate them and make more of us. Oysters, we know them, they have a very hard shell. Maybe the kids try to open them or break them. Because, and they need to be hard because they have some really precious stuff inside that they're trying to protect. But people take it out anyway and then put them over here. But now we're also trying to imitate the structure <coughs> to make light but sturdy roofs and buildings. And there are many buildings in the world that are actually being modeled around oyster shell, which is actually a layered structure of a hard component inside a soft matrix, which makes it very ductile, uh, very tough, but also very hard. And one of the most uh, popular and well-known imitations of human beings when it comes to nature is this. We saw the birds flying and we just started copying them. And now we feel proud about it, right? Every year we make new aeroplanes. So basically, biomimetics is a very important field of science. Why? Because in this, we use tried and tested models of nature. Models which are efficient and reliable. They've gained their efficiency over a period of time and they've proven their reliability. However, this is also a very important aspect of biomimetics. It brings us closer to our environment, and it potentially has limitless possibilities. This is another example. Here we have a lotus plant whose leaves are actually self-cleaning themselves. We have this water droplet on the plant, and this plant has a leaf which actually does not allow the water droplet to stick to it. So the water does not stick and does not vet the surface Rather, it sticks there. So the water droplet, instead of sticking on the surface, actually rolls on it like a ball. 
and it's rolling on the ball, this is actually happening. The leaf has these small protrusions on it, which cause it to not stick to the surface. And it keeps moving on, and then it grabs some dirt particles. The dirt particles stick to the droplet and get washed off, so it gets clean. So a German company <coughs> called ISPO has actually made a paint called Lodosan paint, which they say is a self-cleaning paint. So this is one of the recent imitations of nature. So I would like to finish my presentation by saying that Leonardo da Vinci was actually a quite, I mean, not, not a recent guy, it's actually an old guy, but even then he, even at that time, he said that those people who took, take their inspiration from other than nature are actually just laboring in vain because nature is the thing that's actually the most tried and tested, the most reliable you know, source that we can actually imitate and then we can feel proud about it. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs>